Well, we're going to wind up just right off the bat, folks. Uh, we'll have uh, the contact information for Melzi. And, and as we're talking through this, if you want to reach out to her, just hit our show notes and uh, you'll be able to get a uh, hold of her. But that said, uh, Melzi, uh, you're wanting to talk today, I understand, about transportation and uh, some of the challenges thereof of, of what, managing a uh, contract or getting one or what? Well, you know, we've had, we've seen some changes of late. You know, we never saw any movement, uh, with changes, especially in the maritime industry for, uh, many, many years. And now we, you know, we had the ISRA 22 that came out. And so since then, uh, we've had some additional changes and updates and it's a constant movement of changes, one of the big things we've, we're seeing is uh, detention and emerge. And that is a throwback, of course, to the unreal amount of money that was charged by the terminals and the uh, VOCs during COVID and the pandemic. Um, and I, I, as I said at GTEC, uh, I guess this is one good thing that has come out of the pandemic is supply chain visibility, because I don't know about the two of you, but uh, my whole career has spent uh, telling my family and friends, not in the business, what I do. And uh, the pandemic highlighted it. So, you know, we ended up being I ended up being the topic of conversation and engagement at family gatherings. Oh, it was like, what do you do? And you get the deer in the headlight looks to all of a sudden we're in the, uh, you know, we're on the front row. Oh, there's spotlight. Here it is. Exactly. Exactly. So D&D got on the front row, which I'm glad to see that because um, we all felt during this period of time there was unfair charging of D&D. We saw where, you know, I can't turn in one container unless I'm picking up another. But if I don't have another container to pick up, then I was stuck with the container. I couldn't turn back into the port. The old days, people really don't do this anymore, but it as much. And wait till the freight arrives, then have the entry prepared and submitted, and then go through all that. Well, that means more handling physically of the freight you're going to get charged for it, right? Right. Well, uh, the big exposure there and waiting until the last minute is a delay in in the customs clearance, which that would be a a mitigating factor. Uh, Like in the uh, state of California, if you have a shipment that is held for government purposes, for government clearances, whether it's U.S. Customs or – FDA, Food and Drug Administration, or Department of Transportation, whomever it's being hailed for, then you get like a, a out of jail free card in getting detention and emerge. Uh, other ports are are not or do not have that type of legislation um, in place. So that's that's a really really great uh, plus that, and that was you know adopted years ago. Uh, which is very helpful. But um, there are times when, you know, there's equipment shortages. So you'll get detention and emerge. Uh, port closures. There's a huge uh, uh, case now with the FMC with Evergreen where uh, there was a, the port was closed. Well, they couldn't pick up their freight, but they were still assessed detention and demurrage during that period of time. So we'll see. Everybody's watching that case because if a port closes due to uh, any particular reason, like we were just talking earlier about before everybody got on uh, about L.A. and the power uh, issues they're having, uh, that could be the case when it comes to another port it could be weather it could be um any any particular element and that is a huge plus in mitigating or getting out of that detention and demerge charge so that's another thing to say you know what is this something where let's say it's a weather situation whatever um 
are you set on a particular port or should you have multiple f- port options or what should you t- work with your, your service provider on? Right. So if we're looking at, let's look at the cargo owner first. As a cargo owner, um, whether I'm the, the shipper or the consignee, I should be well aware of my supply chain. I should not be jumping around with multiple service providers. Would I have two, maybe three principal service providers I'm using, whether it's a VOC or whether it's an NVO, uh, to have some options and uh, be able to approach that. But with each service provider, give me some options. Give me uh, an LA, a Long Beach, uh, a Seattle, a Port- Portland, or Canada portal call. Give me some options in order to facilitate uh, the movement of my my supply chain, just in case. Because if anything, any anyone has uh, figured out in the last few years is that just in case can happen, and if it's a completely new uh, supply chain routing for you, then that could cause different issues. So be well aware and be communicating on a regular basis with your NVO and VOC. See. So in looking at that, there's a lot there in, in, in looking through trying to, to get up to speed. What would be a way for someone to become more proficient? Is I'm a rookie in the industry and I need to learn this. Uh, you, you've thrown in a whole lot of stuff in there to say, gee, all I do is arrange a shipment to move from, you know, point A to point B. There's a lot more behind that. Is, um, on the ocean, let's take ocean. For example, I would make sure they're like whoever I'm looking at or engaging is licensed uh, or registered with the FMC, first and foremost. Secondary, just because I know the worth of uh, the association is check, uh, which is free access to anybody, is check and see if they're a member of the NCBFAA. And because that means that one, uh, they're getting some continuing education. Uh, they're part of an organization that has uh, a great representation with all, all government, especially with FMC in this case, uh, with an NBO, uh, and get some education yourself. Mm-hmm. 